Did you know that Congress wants to change how you save for retirement? The changes come as almost half of older workers have no retirement savings, and many who are socking away money for their golden years are far from their goals. While Americans believe they need savings of $1.25 million to live comfortably in retirement, the typical retirement account holds less than $87,000. That's a massive gap. Hi, and welcome back to another Money Not Math conversation. This is Money Not Math conversation number 124, titled Congress Wants to Change How You Save for Retirement. And it's December 22nd, uh, Thursday afternoon. Hope everyone's doing great up in Thief River Falls, Minnesota. It's absolutely beautiful looking outside, but it is freezing. So welcome back to another Money Not Math conversation. I love our country, but I believe our government is terrible at managing money and should not control our financial future. So I do these conversations and I do the work that I do in hopes that I can provide you fa- provide you value on your adventure to retirement planning and hopefully one day enjoying your retirement. So in today's conversation, we are going to be reviewing the article written on cbsnews.com by Amy Peachy titled, Congress Wants to Change How You Save for Retirement. Here's what to know. All right. She starts out by saying Americans could soon change the way they save for retirement. Thanks to several reforms, including the mammoth $1.7 trillion omnibus spending bill that lawmakers are rushing to pass before Friday. At more than 4,000 pages, the spending bill is geared toward funding federal agencies through September 2023, but it also touches on everything from emergency assistance for Ukraine to America's retirement gap. The latter stems from a retirement bill that was passed earlier this year in the House with broad bipartisan support, the Secure 2.0 bill, which was wrapped into the omnibus spending bill. That word's hard to say. I apologize. The changes come as almost half of older workers have no retirement savings, and many who are socking away money for their golden years are far from their goals. While Americans believe they need savings for of $1.25 million on average to live comfortably in retirement, they typically retire. The typical retirement account holds less than $87,000. With that statement, I'm a little curious. It says the typical retirement account has $87,000, but it doesn't state how many accounts the average person has. So it's a little bit of an odd statement or comparison there. I'm, I'm curious how accurate that is. But the point is, there is a large gap between where people want to be for retirement and where they actually are. And that's where people like me come in and when it comes to helping with retirement planning and things like that. Uh, continuing on, the fact that this bill encourages retirement savings and will help those individuals who may not have the ability to put the money away is really positive, says Lisa Feathern-Gill, National Director of Wealth Planning at Comerica Bank. Um, and she told that to CBS Money Watch. Uh, here, here are a few of the major changes in store for American retirement savers. First, employers may match student loan repayments. This is actually really cool. Um, companies may treat their employees' student loan repayments as elective deferrals to their retirement accounts, which would then allow the employers to provide a matching contribution to their 401k. This provision would help workers who are not saving much for retirement because of their college debt. Put in English, Currently, in order to get a match from your 401k or your employer in your 401k, you have to contribute to your 401k. This new proposed change would allow you to count paying off student loans as a contribution for them to match. So you could theoretically pay off a student loan, turn that into your your employer, and they would contribute to your 401k as a match for paying off your student loans. I think that's a genius idea. Uh, This is saying up to a certain point, the loan payments you make will count as if you put the money into the retirement plan. That will help younger workers struggling, like I said. So a 50% retirement match for $2,000 in savings. This this one I'm not so sure about. Uh, The bill would also expand the savers credit, a non-refundable tax credit, by turning it into a direct federal contribution to retirement accounts held by low and middle income workers. Under the plan, the workers who earn below a certain income threshold and contribute to a retirement plan could get a 50% match from the government for up to $2,000 in contributions. The income limits are $35,500 for single filers and $71,000 for married taxpayers. While a $1,000 match may seem like a small benefit, the impact could be powerful over time, experts say. If you start early, then the impact for, of compounding interest can be significant. So the, second, the last part is true. The earlier you start saving for retirement, the better. Uh, one one year earlier saved at the beginning of your career is far more significant than one year lost at the end due to the way that compounding works over time. However, what I don't, what I'm skeptical about in this idea is this match. So what they're, what I believe they're saying is, is that if you save 
into a retirement plan and your income is less than $35,500 for an individual or $71,000 for a married couple, and then you submit to the government that you saved into a retirement plan, they're going to do a 50% match of up to $2,000 additionally to your retirement plan. Sounds like free money, right? There's no such thing as free money. Where is this money? Where is this match coming from? Where is this match from the government coming from? Are they going to print more money? which drives inflation, which is the number one issue everyone's having today. So they're literally going to throw bad money after bad by just hiking inflation to help people save for retirement. That doesn't really seem to make sense. Or are they going to raise taxes? So is this going to be another redistribution of wealth saying, hey, we want to help those in need. So we're just going to raise taxes. Does that really help those in need? Right. So um I'm not so sure how good of an idea this one is. It seems to me a little bit more of like a selling point than an actual like value add, but I guess we'll see. Uh, continuing on to the third one, delay mandatory withdrawals until age 75. The bill would also change the, would change the law regarding required minimum distributions or RMDs, which is the amount of money that retirees are mandatory to withdraw each year starting at a certain age. Currently, the people need to start taking their RMDs at age 72. But the bill would boost that age to 73 starting in January 2023 and then raise it again to age 75 in 2033. That would get, give older Americans more flexibility to delay when they want to start drawing down their retirement assets. But it has also sparked some criticism from tax experts who say the provision would mostly benefit wealthier retirees. The change will mainly help the rich shelter their income from taxes for longer periods and build up more wealth for their heirs according to a December 16 letter sent to Congress from 45 organizations, including Americans for Tax Fairness. So this is a, this could be potentially massive. Uh, when it comes to retirement and legacy planning, the uh, RMDs can have a massive role. Um, first, because some people, some of our clients, some people we know, they don't need to take money from their taxable accounts in retirement at, at this year, but they're forced to by the government due to RMDs which incurs a tax, right? So now that creates a planning issue or something to plan around, right? A planning topic, we'll say. This, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Second, if it's moved back from 72 to 75, that gives you three more years to not have to use that money if you don't want to, which is good and that's awesome. But when it comes to legacy planning, it's important to note that they removed the previous rules around inherited IRAs and now your, your inherited IRAs only have 10 years. So if they are in, if they're delaying the length of time you have to use your money, which increases the chances it will grow, and that which increases the chances that you're going to have a, a larger legacy passing on to your heirs. If your heirs are receiving a larger sum of money, but they are forced to spend that money within a 10 year period rather than their entire lives like they used to be able to. Now they have more money that they have to spend in a 10-year period, so they could be incurring a larger tax penalty over that 10-year period if not properly planned around. So it's important for you individually to understand how could this delayed RMD affect you, but also it's important for you to understand how it could affect your heirs and those you're leaving money behind to. All right, so continuing on next, uh, the next point is pre-retirees can sock away more money. Older workers who are just a few years away from retirement or pre-retirees could boost their retirement savings under the bill. People in their early 60s will be able to increase their catch-up savings from the current $6,500 to $10,000 per year starting in 2025. This provision has also drawn criticism for mainly helping upper-income workers. This only helps the few workers with enough disposable cash to take advantage of their newer high, new higher limits, the December 16 letter said. Um, so this is an example of, it's kind of just a, a, a kind of a whatever to me. Um, there's plenty of places outside your 401k that you can save into. So if you have the ability to save more than your maximum contribution, it will just save somewhere else. It's not really a big deal. Um, but it, it's a, it's this, this whole provision is a perfect example of how our government doesn't understand how money works and how compounding works and how wealth works, unless they're talking about, you know, politicians own pockets. Uh, because to increase your savings for the last few years of your working life is going to make a significantly less impact than as if you were to save more early in your career or earlier in your career. And that's just something that clearly they don't understand by having catch up provisions. But 
that's neither here nor there. The other point I don't really agree with in this letter is that this only helps wealthy people. Again, there's plenty of places to save outside your 401k. So if you hit your maximum contribution or if the contribution limit is raised, I don't, it's not like a zero sum game where by helping one group of people, we're hurting others. It's just providing options. So continuing on, uh, I believe this is the last point. It is automatic 401k enrollment. Another thing that they are trying to require is that everyone who has a 401k has to save into it unless they opt out. And this is what the article says. It says another big change is that one experts is one that experts say can ensure workers are contributing, contributing to their 401ks starting in 2025. New retirement plans must automatically enroll workers. The plans must also enroll them for con contributions between 3% to 10% of their income. The participant can opt out and they can change the percentage for a plan to qualify as a 401k plan. They have to have that provision. So this is uh, already happens in a lot of people's 401ks. The day you sign up, they automatically enroll you at some percent. And also what happens in a lot of people's 401ks is on each annual, on an annual basis, your for your percentage will step up 1%. And this is something to be aware of for two reasons. First, it's important for you to know how much you're saving and where you're saving it, right? If you think you're saving 3%, but you're really saving 4% or 5% or 6%, that, that can, you know, impact your planning. But also second, I, I believe all, but I won't say all because I don't know this for sure. Most, if not all, 401k automatic enrollments puts you in the traditional 401k. So that's tax deferred savings. So if it's your intention to save in after tax ways using Roth accounts or other after tax and tax advantage savings vehicles, it's important to be aware that your automatic contributions are likely pre-tax. So if you want to go and make them after tax, you have to go and physically or manually do that. It's also important to be aware that any and all matches are going to be after tax. So that can make an impact on your planning as well. So again, this in today's conversation, we talked about how Congress wants to change how you save for retirement. Uh, please comment on this post uh, directly, letting me know what questions or thoughts you have about this conversation. Uh, please comment uh, uh, with any um, requests or future conversations that you have. And I always, always appreciate those who are willing to take the time to like, comment, and or share the posts that I have so that I can impact uh, more people and hopefully provide more value. So thanks again for your time. Hope you have a great day and, and Merry Christmas. Bye.